All right, guys, welcome to Psych Explained. In this video, we're going to examine the endocrine system. And to start, let's compare it to another system in our body that you're probably familiar with, and that would be our nervous system. So let's start there. Now, your nervous system is essentially a network of nerves, hence nervous system, that carry signals throughout the body. Whether it's to move my muscles, control thought, control speech, this is our nervous system. It is composed of two parts our brain and spinal cord, right, right down the middle. This would be our central nervous system, the first component. And all the nerves that flow away from the brain and spinal cord, that would be our peripheral nervous system, or PNS, right? Peripheral meaning outside. And in terms of the signal and message that flows along those nerves, that would be an electrical signal, okay? And that's important because the endocrine system is vastly different. And you remember what that electrical signal is called? That's called an action Action what? An action potential, okay? So for example, put that in parentheses, I have my little nerve here, right? My action potential is gonna stimulate this presynaptic neuron. That's gonna cause a flood of neurotransmitters to float across the synapse and bind receptors on my postsynaptic neuron and continue and continue until that message is received. Now, the pathway that electrical signal takes is along those nerves or neurons. And in terms of the speed, it is extremely fast, right? The moment I think about moving my finger, my finger moves. So there's our nervous system. Now, how does this differ or even compare to our endocrine system? Well, instead of a network of nerves, our endocrine system is a network of glands, okay? And you might be thinking, what's a gland? Well, a gland is any organ that releases or secretes a chemical message, right? So instead of an electrical message, this is going to secrete a chemical message. And do we know what that chemical message is called? Hormones, okay? So all these glands are going to release something called hormones throughout the body. Now, our action potentials flow along nerves. But where do these chemicals called hormones flow? Well, these are actually going to flow through our blood, okay? Our bloodstream. Okay, so they enter through the bloodstream and they're gonna flow throughout the body via our cardiovascular system and go to whatever destination it needs to. And as opposed to the nervous system, which is extremely fast, our, our endocrine system can tend to be very slow. It might take days to weeks, even months, for our hormones to have an effect on, let's say, part of the body, like during puberty, right? So there's a nice fundamental difference between the nervous system and the endocrine system. The best analogy that I've heard, I think, to understand these two is the nervous system is like an email, right? You send it to one person, you have a target, you know exactly who you're going to send it to, and it's extremely fast, right? Instantaneous. While the endocrine system is more like a social media post, right? You put it out there, you don't know who's going to open it, when they're going to open it is extremely slow. It's also going to everybody, and we'll see kind of who receives it, right? So there's kind of a nice difference between the two. All right, now let's start with our endocrine system. What are all the glands or the endocrine glands that make up the system? We're gonna start with the most important. What is that? That is up here. This right here, and we'll shade that in together, okay? This is called our hypo, hypothalamus, okay? This is extremely important. This is the command center, okay? This is the part of the brain that essentially maintains or regulates homeostasis, right? If you're too hot, you gotta get cold. If you're too thirsty, you gotta drink. If you're hungry, you gotta eat. If you're sleepy, you gotta sleep. It's gotta make sure that we maintain homeostasis. So that would be one of our main functions. To what? Maintain, maintain homeo stasis, all right? So it's got to make sure that our body is in a balanced state. Now, what's also cool about the hypothalamus is it's kind of the link between the endocrine system and the nervous system. And let's write that in. It is the link between, and I'll abbreviate here, the nervous system and the endocrine system right? Because it receives electrical signals throughout the body, the organs and, and the heart, the liver and all that kind of stuff. It also controls the autonomic nervous system, which is a subdivision of the peripheral nervous system. And it communicates with the other glands to secrete hormones. So it's kind of that bridge between the nervous system and the endocrine system. And in terms of what it regulates, 
It does a lot. Okay, so here's just some examples. It helps control or regulate things like metabolism. We'll talk about that in a second. Metabolism. Uh, growth, right? Going through puberty or having your muscles grow and things like that. Even your mood, okay? And sleep. Okay. And we'll put a nice big H up here so we remember that's our hypothalamus, okay? All right, so that's the commander. Now, if we think about this as like the boss, right? Well, who would be second in command? Well, second in command would be these two lobes right here. Would we call that? This would be the pituitary gland, okay? The pituitary gland. And this would be our second in command, all right? Now, what does the pituitary gland do? Well, first, it's often known as the master gland, okay? And why is it considered the master gland? because it controls or regulates the majority of other glands in our body. See, the hypothalamus and pituitary gland are very hands-on, okay? And they communicate to each other. The hypothalamus is gonna get signals from the body. It's gonna release and secrete specific hormones. It's gonna then tell the pituitary gland to release hormones of itself to affect the rest of the body. So that's kind of connection right there. Now, in terms of what it affects, it affects things like the thyroid. We'll talk about that in a second the thyroid gland. It affects the adrenal glands. Okay, it's going to secrete hormones and affect these. And the ovaries and testes, which we'll label as the gonads, the sex glands. Okay? Now you can get actually really specific when it comes to the pituitary gland. You'll notice how there's kind of two little lobes. This one being what we call the anterior, meaning in front, and this one being the posterior lobe in back. They all secrete or produce specific hormones. So if you want to look up anterior lobe or posterior lobe, you'll get a lot of information about what each one produces or does. But just one example is, uh, would be the growth hormone, okay? This is one well-known hormone that's secreted and produced by the pituitary. So this goes to our muscles, it goes to our bones, right? It's definitely released during puberty just to make sure everything's working properly. So GH would be our abbreviation, okay? So there's nice information. Okay, so before we get to the lobes that the pituitary gland um, regulates, let's go to our third and final lobe that's in the brain. You see that little green dot right there? That's our third lobe in the brain. And what's that? That's the pineal gland, okay? The pineal gland. And the pineal gland, named after because it looks like a pine cone, deals with one thing, well, primarily one thing, and that is sleep, okay? So what does it do? It helps release or regulate, regulate, regulate our sleep cycle. And how does it do that? Well, it releases a very specific hormone that affects our sleep and makes you all sleepy. And what is that? It releases melatonin and that's melatonin. So that's gonna put us nice to sleep. And then we get up in the morning, our pineal gland's going to suppress melatonin and get us nice and awake. And let's actually do a little arrow so we know where our pineal gland is located. All right, so let's get to the glands outside of the brain and many of them controlled by the pituitary gland. Let's start with the first one, and that is our thyroid, okay? It kind of looks like a butterfly. It kind of looks like a, I don't know, like a bow tie. And this is located um, right, and it hugs our trachea, our windpipe, and is located right below my Adam's apple, okay? And what does our thyroid do? Well, our thyroid mainly helps with metabolism. Metabolism, okay? So what is metabolism? Metabolism is essentially taking in uh, food and turning that into fuel or energy. And it does it a few ways. It will help, you know, secrete a couple different hormones, things like uh, T3 and T4. And once again, we're not going to get too specific, but it does secrete specific hormones to make sure that happens. Now, you'll also notice with the thyroid, there's kind of little, you know, four little dots on each corner, okay? That's because there's also a gland located just behind that thyroid. And what is that called? That would be our parathyroid. Parathyroid. Okay, and what does our parathyroid do? Our parathyroid helps release or regulate, we'll say regulate, regulate the amount of calcium in our blood and in our bones, right? So you ever hear that saying, you know, drink your milk because uh, there's a lot of calcium it's gonna help your bones. Well, there is some truth to that, all right? So there's our parathyroid. All right, what else? We also have, we have our kidneys right here, we have what we call our adrenal glands, all right? 
I'll do a little arrow once again. This is our adrenal glands. Okay, and why do we call it adrenal? Because they are adjacent to the kidneys, okay? And the cool thing about our adrenal glands, and you'll see them kind of on both sides, is everything it does is really for our survival and to make sure that we are okay in times of danger or stress. So what does our adrenal glands do? Well, it's going to secrete a few things. It's going to secrete things like cortisol, okay, which is our main stress hormone, right? So if you're doing public speaking, uh, if you are doing something like uh, taking a test, talking to somebody you don't know, going on a date, right, that would be cortisol. Or something like adrenaline, also known as epinephrine. Okay, and this is more involved in our fight, what is it called, fight or flight response, okay? So if you're really in danger, right, it's gonna flood your system, dilate pupils, uh, blood's gonna rush your hands, so you can fight, so you can run faster, right? So that's our adrenal glands. Now it also has some anti-inflammatory function, so if you hurt yourself, it's kinda like a built-in Advil or Tylenol in your body, those would be our adrenal glands. All right, now just, uh, in the middle of those and behind our stomach, right by our abdomen, is this little blue one right here. We'll color that in, okay? And it's a nice flat endocrine gland. And this one, do an arrow, is what we call our pancreas. Okay, our pancreas. Now, what does our pancreas do? Our pancreas, okay, primarily regulates our blood sugar levels, okay, or glucose, okay? So when you eat, blood sugar is gonna go up, but when you don't eat, it's gonna go down. How does it do that? It does that by secreting specific hormones. Secrete specific hormones. Uh, things like insulin, okay? So when you uh, eat a lot and you, your blood sugar is raised, your pancreas is gonna produce insulin to lower that, or if you don't eat enough, it's gonna secrete glucagon. All right, so there's our pancreas, making sure that our blood sugar levels are right in line. And guess what happens? If it doesn't work or not align, that could lead to diabetes, okay? All right, what's last? Our last ones are considered our gonads, okay? Or in women, it would be our ovaries, and in men, it would be our testes. Let's start with the ovaries. Now, what are our ovaries? Our ovaries, and we'll start with what it secretes. It secretes estrogen, estrogen, and progesterone. Progesterone, okay? And what do these affect? Well, these are going to affect things like female, female, sex characteristics. Characteristics. You might be thinking, what female characteristics would they be? Things like widening of the hips, breast development, uh, releasing egg, um, producing milk after a child born, right? So everything involved in child, fertility, growth would be ovaries. And in terms of men, and by the way, we'll do a little arrow so we know what we're talking about. Okay, in men, we have our testes, okay? And instead of secreting estrogen and progesterone, what do the testes release? Secrete. This is going to release testosterone. Testosterone, okay? And instead of female sex characteristics, what do we have? We are gonna have or regulate male sex characteristics. And what would be some male sex characteristics? Well, it would be things like body hair and deepening of the voice and uh, producing sperm and a sex drive or libido. So that would be our testosterone. And as we age, both estrogen and testosterone tend to decrease. So that's important to know as well. So these probably make up our endocrine glands. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you learned a lot. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe. I'll see you next time.